for all together fought in the hills, high hills of Himalayas. But the saddest thing of this war was that it was literally a national shame. We buckled up in this war. I will go over the reasons why what happened that India's performance was so devastating. Unfortunately, it was a real shame, national shame, if I may use that word. And the soldier, poor soldier, paid the price for the inefficiency of the national leadership. I will go a step further, not only the national leadership, but to some extent, even military leadership. I just give you bird's eye view first in few lines, and then we go into nitty gritty of the, of the war. It was basically a border dispute to start off. China claimed sovereignty over Aksai Chin and uh, Arunachal Pradesh. They said this is a part of uh, and that is how they were able to build the road there. But from India's point of view, this was part of Kashmir and not Zindia. But the flashpoint came in 1959 when a very major and a violent uprising took place in Tibet in 1959, which led to Dalai Lama getting asylum in India to the The third point, which is the, uh, was the basically the starting point of the war, was India's forward policy. India kept deploying its force well beyond the recognized uh, interstate border. But these are basically the, the background. The Chinese tried level best to resolve the issue politically but somehow if India's policy a forward policy Dalai Lama and all these were left only unhappy with India and when they found politically there no solution and they made progress very fast. India's defense is buckled, buckled up in no, no time. And in a matter of very short time, the Chinese declared the unilateral ceasefire, declared to withdraw from those areas which, which were under dispute. Surprisingly, Despite devastating defeat by India, India did not use the air power. If India had used air power, the scenario would have been entirely different because Chinese air force at that time of time was nowhere near Indian air force. But wrong inputs little inputs uh, prevented India from using air power. It was sometime 1913 that the uh, representatives from England, Tibet, and China met at, at uh, Shimla to decide the border between Tibet and India. Decision was taken, and when they went back, the Chinese backed out of this decision and refused to ratify. But the British went ahead, and British went ahead and ratified with Tibet. That is what is called the McMahon Line.
Now, the boundary between in the northern region has been, Himalayas have been an ancient boundary in the Indian subcontinent. But China claimed that Himalayas are also are part of Tibet. It was in 1930, from 1930 onwards rather, that the British Indian maps always showed my own line as the boundary between India and, and Tibet. And from then onwards, both countries, Chinese and India, patrols to or, or to these areas to keep an eye on each other. India had taken on at this stage that the boundary is not the Macron line, the boundary is the highest ridges together. If you link up the highest ridges in Tibet, and uh, that will form the boundary between Tibet and India. So there is a difference of opinion now. China is stuck to and India's new line, highest ridges. Both started patrolling and they then discovered that a large number of highest ridges were north of Macron line. That, that means they were north of the recognized border. And India started deploying posts beyond Macron line along the highest ridges, which was not to the liking of the Chinese. They said India is becoming an expressionist power and they felt, they felt threatened from India that India is moving up northwards and occupying places which are part of their sovereignty and they were enraged uh, on this issue. About the same time uh, a violent uprising took place in uh, Tibet in 1959. Dalai Lama had to flee from Tibet and Nehru gave him the asylum in India. Now this made Mao Zedong extremely unhappy with India and this was the first time an armed conflict took place, a limited armed conflict took place. China attacked a place called Longju in East in August 59 and Konkazong in the West in October 59. And they killed some Indian, about nine, 10 Indian and took equal number as before. This is the first instance at Longchu and Konka where armed conflict took place between India and China. The Chinese maps continue showing excitement as well as uh, Arunachal Pradesh as their territory. But India also did not budge and continue to send patrol along this area, which resulted in continuous skirmishes, continuous unhappy state of air along the border. And this the diplomatic relations came down quite badly. Surprisingly, India had not claimed sovereignty over Aksai Chen till 1958. And that too, it was just told to Chinese ambassador in India that this is our territory. There are no formal indicting claim on Aksai Chen. Now, why was India trying to 
follow this forward policy will create so much bad blood. One view was that India thought it was very powerful. They can go ahead and secure northern borders favorably so that in any future time things are not too bad, not too much against India. To give you an example, six out of 60 posts, 43 posts were north of my Macron line. That means 43 posts were illegally from the Chinese point of view, even from India point, were illegally established. China viewed this expansionist policy of India very, very seriously, and they issued ultimatum to India in April 1962 to withdraw from all forward posts back to the Macron line. But for some reason, India didn't react. India was overconfident that China is no match. Fortunately for India, we missed an opportunity. In 1960, June 62, no, 1960 rather, Chon Lai, Chinese Prime Minister, offered unofficially to Nehru to drop the claim on excitation and they will drop the claim on Arunachal Pradesh. So it was a deal being offered that you don't claim exciting and we will not claim exciting. Uh, but Nehru turned down and declined this offer. Then somewhere down keeping in line with the policy of forward deployment, India went ahead and deployed a post called Dhola Post on the southern slopes of Thakla Ridge. This is the point where the war started from. China protested heavily because they said, you are deployed again north of Macron line and well beyond into the Chinese area of influence. And China, and when they found India were not reacting, not pulling out their post, China started deploying the troops and came very heavily down the Thakla Ridge on 8 September 62 and overran the entire post, killing almost everybody. Something very interesting happened at this time. And that Nehru Prime Minister was on his way down south at Palam Airport. The media press people asked him about the state of affairs. And you know what the Prime Minister replied? I have told my army to throw the Chinese out. This is the statement Nehru made. Living in a world of his own, not knowing what, what is happening in the country not knowing what is the Chinese capacity and capabilities, not knowing what is your own capability and capacity in relation to the adversary. And this was the last straw on Cabal's back and Mao Zedong took on this as a challenge. I will teach a lesson to Nehru, was his response. And from here on was a feverish build up at Thagla Ridge and Nehru for the first time realized things are serious. And he realized that the attack is imminent in fact. Till now the, he felt that the Chinese will not use force against India. That was his misplaced overconfidence.
The government of India, I will not use the word Nehru every time, the government of India was overconfident. Estimated Chinese capability. They underestimated Chinese intent even. And Nehru, number of times, but for some reason, Nehru never reacted to it favorably. And finally, the Chinese took action, what they call self-defense counterattack. And they simultaneously attacked multi-pronged attack in the West and in the East, both sides on 20th October 62. Really regained all the territory which they claim, or even which were in a dispute in matter of days. In fact, they moved so fast that they covered 16 kilometers down the hills in just four days. Once again, Chow and Lai offered the same deal to Nehru on 14th November, 4th November, that you don't claim excitation, we will not claim Arunachal Pradesh. Chinese had a great interest in excitation. Number one, they had built a road there. And number two, they wanted total control over Xinjiang. In, in fact, uh, in a lighter way, and initially when it was discovered in the early 50s that the Chinese have built a road in Xai Chin, in the parliament, a member of parliament by the name Mr. Tyagi raised the issue and under Nehru's reply was, nothing grows there, so what's the problem? And Congress member, Mr. Tyagi's reply was, look at my hand, nothing grows here. But it doesn't mean there's nothing inside it. So this was a big... Anyway, so when this was offered, again, John Lai offered Nehru on 4th November for this deal. But for some reason, Nehru again declined in his reply on 14th November. And from now on was a real heavy war offensive started. India's defenses just collapsed in no time. Bondila fell, Sela fell. On 18 November, two major passes fell, and many other targets fell in no time. And the Chinese reach their objective at the plains of Assam in no time. As the Chinese were approaching the plains, there was a panic in Tezpur. The public started evacuating, and the worst was that the DC Tezpur burnt everything and ran away. Nehru panicked at this stage. He panicked so much that he wrote two letters to Kennedy, American president, please send me aid. And then what aid he was asking? Please send me 12 fighter squadrons. As if fighter squadron lying on a shelf he'll pick up and send it. 12 fighter squadron is a massive force worth crores, and he politely declined. The period when Nehru's famous non-alignment was in the air, and that is one reason that America and India's relations, or Nehru and Kennedy and down the line everybody else, 
American president, positions were very bad. Americans just could not stand non-alignment. For them, you have to either with America or with other past superpower, USSR. Nehru said, send me 12 fighter squadron and tell me a number of radar stations so I can, but they refused. But the USSR came to their rescue, despite the fact that India was fighting a Chinese, communist Chinese, an ally of USSR. But USSR came to India's rescue to some extent. The collapse so badly, we lost thousands of soldiers in this war. India was not prepared for any war. India had no weapon system. And three, not three rifle, which was the World War II rifle. India were not kitted. They were using canvas shoes in Himalayas over snow. They had no woolen with them. So they were neither kitted nor armed. They were just pushed into the war because Nehru didn't accept they will be in war till Dhula post triggered the war. And the last point of this was the Indian leadership. Inadequate, inefficient, absolutely. Not only the political leadership, even the military leadership in some cases, not all, was not up to the mark. So national leadership, both political and military, didn't rise to the occasion. Prime Minister of India at that phase was a government by himself. He seldom listened to the others. Home Minister, Mr. Patel, wrote an assessment of the Chinese threat, threat perception from China as early as 1950, and set that threat perception to Nehru, to his prime minister, that the Chinese are a major threat, if not today, in a matter of few years. That aside, never took action on anything. Ignore the letter, in fact, altogether. President Ratha Krishnan was very upset. He remarked, government he accused his government of credulity and negligence. A very strong remark by the president of the country against his government. In response, she said, we were out of touch with reality. We were living in an atmosphere of our own creation. These are Nehru's words after Radha, Radha Krishna made that statement. Well, why didn't we use APA? And the last point I want to touch now is there was very little intelligence. There was only impression that if we use APA, Chinese will use APA and they will come down and knock down our industrial complex at Calcutta and other areas. That means India, without rational reason, without any intelligence input, were afraid APA. If we use APA, they will use APA, and they will come and attack industrial complex of Calcutta and other industrial areas in plains of Assam. Let me tell you, if the crack in intelligence input was there, 
Indian Air Force was far superior than the Chinese Air Force. The scenario of war outcome would have been entirely different if the air power was used. Today you can say the Chinese air power is maybe shade superior, but in Tibet once again, Chinese is the Indian air power, which is more dominant than the Chinese air power because of the altitude factor. Well, gentlemen, that's all I think I have to tell you about this war. So this war was left a scar, scar on Indian psyche. The result is even today, the word Chinese soldier, Chinese army, Chinese air power, leave some little nervousness in our head. We are still conscious of the collapse that we faced in 1962. Well, thank you very much. That's all I have.